instructor at Ambo University. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate sample size cal sample size using epinfo. Before that, what is some of you may ask that what is sampling? You no, know, it is a process of you know like selecting the portion of the population to represent the entire population because most of the time we need to infer to the general population, but we can't do or we can't collect data from all the entire pop population so that we are required to do sampling and it has its own advantage actually in terms of feasibility maybe sampling may be the only feasible method of collecting the information because of maybe one cost because sampling will reduce the cost and also the level of accuracy will be increased and the speed of gathering data also increased and there are different types of sample size calculation and sample size determination depend on different things like that of objective of the study and design of the study we know that there are different types of study like they can be descriptive and analytic in broad classification and plan of the statistical analysis also determine our sample size calculation and determination because some of the assumption of some statistical calculations may require adequate sample size and also the accuracy of the measurement to be made and the degree of precision and degree of confidence also some of the factors that affect the sample size so without further ado let's see how to calculate sample size using EP info I have EP info version 7 and this EP info version 7 has different features different features this one is stat calc as you can see there are different functions of the EP info mostly it is used as data entering so it has data creating button data create form form button data entry button or option and also there is stat calc and in advanced EP info versions there is analyzed data for our today's say today's tutorial I only show you the how to perform stat calc so we select stat calc and this window will come up as I said before the sample size calculation is affected by the study design as you can see there are different study designs that are listed here the first one is population survey that we see today and cohorts or cross-sectional unmatched or case control and the like the reason why I select the population survey is that most of the undergraduate studies and also I see many master's thesis are done by using single population formula or cross-sectional study design by nature so there are two types of cross-sectional study the first one is descriptive the second one is analytical so in the stat calc there is cross-sectional it represents the analytical part because the analytic cross-sectional is mostly comparative cross-sectional since it compared two groups it has exposed and unexposed and it requires the ratio between them and additional power and the like so I will show you the how to calculate using this two population proportion formula but for today I only show you the sample size calculation for single population proportion the formula is like this Z alpha over 2 times PQ where Q is 1 minus P because most of the time the P is represented by percent so we will change into number in cross-sectional studies or cross-sectional surveys are done you know estimate the population parameter like that of prevalence so the P represent that prevalence 
of some diseases in the community and the like. The sample size formula of such kinds of required epidemiologists may want to the proportion of children hypertensive or how many of them are affected by the new disease and the like prevalence and others. Z alpha over 2, as you can see here, Z alpha over 2, it is a standard normal variate, you know, at 5% type 1 error, it becomes p value less than 0 0.05. And if it is 1% type 1 error, it is p value less than 0 0.01. So, but mostly we use 95, 95 or 5%, 95% confidence interval. So, in the standard normal curve, it will give us 1.96. Okay. If we increase or if we decrease the error to 1%, it will become 2.58. It's not as such a big because a big deal because I will show you in the software. As I said before, P is a proportion in the value that population based on previous studies or pilot studies. If the if the study is you know then in our area period we may use that prevalence or percentage but if not we have two options the first one is you know conducting pilot study using small sample size so we determine the proportion or the percentage then we use for sample size calculation but the other is you know hypothesis using hypo tests hypothesizing the percentage based on different evidences Finally, if you don't have the capacity to do all this, we can use still 50% because 50% give us the maximum sample size. When we calculate 50%, it becomes 0 0.5. So P and Q become 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So it will give us the larger sample size. D is absolute error or precision. It has to be decided by actually by the researcher depend on different different things so we click on the population survey and this window will come up so you know in order to avoid confusion I will minimize those windows and the first one is that there are different buttons that we need to fill. As you can see, the confidence interval can range from 80% to 99.9%. It again depends on our resource. Whenever the level of confidence increases, the sample size also increases. Okay. And the population size is one of the factors. Okay. One of the factors that determine the sample size. And if we know the actual population number, total population, we can we can write here but if it is less than 1000 we need to know exactly because we use correction formula correction formula otherwise we can leave it as it is as i said before the maximum sample size will be obtained by prevalence per percentage of 50 percent so it will give us in 95 percent confidence interval it will give us it will give us 384. Okay, 384. The other one is margin of error. It will be represented as D in the formula. It will be represented as D. Again, it will be decided by the researcher. It will be decided by the researcher. And when we see if you have previous study, for example, we may 50% of expected frequency. In that case, the 95% confidence interval becomes 369. As you can see, whenever the p-value decreases, the sample size decreased. And also, if it is greater than again 50%, let's say 60%, again it is decreased because one minus p always varies. And the another thing is that d is our margin of error that will be decided by the researcher by considering his time resources budget 
whenever we decrease the percent the error whenever we decrease the error that we allow the sample size will increase because whenever we got larger size larger sample size the chance of error is reduced but it doesn't mean always necessary larger sample size guarantees you know true or error free result or estimation so let's see the example when we make it three the 95 percent confidence interval of the sample size become 1023 it was when it was five it was 369 okay another thing that we need to consider is the design effect design effect is when we are taking sample size when we are taking sample size from the general population or sampling during sampling procedure we may take up on different hierarchies okay from the general population to sub population and again sub sub population finally the study unit so there are many hierarchies we may pass on to reach in order to reach the study unit so that this kind of for example if we take africa or for example you can take ethiopia from ethiopia we can take one region let's take the capital city of addis in the capital of city of addis there are 10 sub cities from those 10 sub cities we may only choose one randomly for budget and for different reasons shortage shortage of time human power and the like so whenever we are reducing or narrowing the study area we are introducing bias in order to co cope up those that or in order, in order to compensate that error that introduced error we increase the sample size by multiplying the design effect actually design effect has its own calculation and its own formula but most of the time we can take design effect by considering the budget and the time especially if you are conducting for research for graduation undergraduate completion of partial fulfillment of graduation and for thesis we can use 1.5 because we may not have that budget and also the time and if we take large or many hierarchies we can use two so it will double our sample size for example when it was one our sample size was 369 in 95% confidence interval and when we use design effect of 2 it will be double up and become 700 738 okay 738 and the other thing is that cluster in the cluster we may it's depend on again the sampling procedure is if there is clusters we add on these clusters finally we should not be mistaken that this is our sample size the other thing that i forget to mention is that that, I, that affect the sample size is that non-response rate okay non-response rate is when we are conducting survey the study units may not be presented or may not be available during, during data collection so even if this is a maximum sample size it is the minimum acceptable sample size okay the minimum acceptable sample size okay the minimum acceptable sample size with this proportion so we cannot be have a sample that is less than this number in order to compensate those missed study participants we use non-response rate again this non-response rate depends on the sensitivity of the research our budget and other things most of the time the frequent non-response rate is ranges from 5 to 15 percent some statistics suggested that non-response rates more than 20 percent loses its statistical power it cannot replace those who are not available during data collection so we need to consider other things let's take the example of the 60 percent population 60 percent 
expected frequency and 5% meridian of error and with design effect of 2 it will give us 738 so 738 times for example I may take 10% and response rate multiplied by 0 0.1 it become 73 okay 73.8 since there is no such 0.8 percent you know because in in population survey most of the study units are humans we wind up the number to the next higher whole number that is 74 so we will add 74 on the sample size which is 738 finally our sample size become 700 38 plus 74 it become 812 so this is the actual sample size that we use in order to conduct the study and make infer inferential statistics you know generalization make generalization i think this is all about how to calculate sample size using ep info for population surveys if you have any question I'm happy to answer so write below on the comment section and I hope this this video help you help you a lot in order to see other videos please don't forget to like and subscribe thank you bye bye You know that I